Hi guys and welcome back to At Home with Elisa. Today I wanted to show you how we effectively doubled the size of our tiny homes. We are in tiny homes on our property here until we build our future home which will go just in this big grass area here. So we are in tiny homes, we've been here for a year now and we're still doing some paperwork with council but we'll be in these tiny homes for a little while. Originally we didn't know if we were actually keeping this particular home so we have two on our property we didn't know if we were keeping this particular home but we have decided that we are now so we're looking at doing it up and making it look a little bit nicer because it will eventually be used for um like guest accommodation in the theater room and entertaining sort of purposes so we'd like to get it looking nice but in the meantime it actually needs to serve functional purposes as well so our tiny homes are only 36 square meters which obviously is quite tiny when you consider that we've got a bathroom a living and two bedrooms so they are quite tiny um, that's why one of the reasons why we wanted to add on decks to the front of the properties um, in Australia obviously a lot of the time you spend outdoors on your deck um, we did at our old house and we absolutely loved it we spent majority of our time out there eating entertaining it's it's just a lovely place to be um, so we wanted to make sure that we added decks onto these ones here just to make it feel a little bit more comfortable so that you could have people over and you wouldn't actually be tripping all over each other. So let me show you around our deck. So as you come up our front stairs, oh it's starting to rain. As you come up our front stairs, you can see our spotted gum. Um, you can see the dog chuck too. But our spotted gum has had a bit of a rough life up here. We did put a lot of sealant on it. It hasn't actually really helped, so we have to redo that. But this area just here is our kitchen. We don't have we don't have an internal kitchen. Um, so this is essentially where we do all our cooking. So we obviously have um, our barbecue with some um, baking supplies down below, uh, small appliances here, pots and pans, coffee and spices. So this is essentially our kitchen. We do have a pantry area which is stored in another area. So if we do need anything else and we have a large fridge as well. But this is essentially where we do all of our cooking. So my husband is the main cook in our family and he loves this barbecue. As you scroll around over to this corner, this is our utility corner. So it's not pretty by any means, but it serves its function. We obviously have all our shoes and our laundry baskets, umbrellas. And in this corner, we have our table, which is our dining table. We do not have a dining table inside. So this is actually the table from our old back deck. And as you can see, the chairs have had a bit of a rough life. They definitely need a makeover. Um, and I've almost finished building my greenhouse so you can see my little plant stash here as well so almost finished building the greenhouse and then over in this corner here is our lounge area so we obviously I've just got the heater going at the moment because it's quite cold today I think it's like nine degrees or something so it's quite chilly I'm actually thinking that maybe I could put another buffet just along here which would be quite nice. If you look at it from this angle, like obviously we've got the empty temporary pool behind, but I could have a buffet just going behind there as well, which would also give us more storage. So at first I was definitely not keen on putting bistro blinds up around the outside of our decks. However, practicality actually won out. Um, reason being is that we've had some large storms here, obviously, New South Wales is having an interesting weather situation. We have had some really large storms here and our whole deck got wet. Now this furniture that lives on this deck is, it, we used to have it on our old deck and it was quite protected, but we it's not the most beautiful furniture, but it works really well for out here. We don't necessarily mind if it gets wet, but leather lounges shouldn't really be rained on constantly. So we did have some rather large storms. The whole deck actually ended up wet at one point and that's with a big roof on it. The whole deck was absolutely soaked um, and we've even had hail all the way across here as well. So that sort of led us to the conclusion that we needed to definitely put the bistro blinds up. Um, we sourced them, we've had them um, at a previous property. I'm not a huge fan of them, but 
they work well. We sourced them and we actually kept buying the supply out of supplies. So we had to keep going back and back and back. So it has taken us probably about six weeks to actually get this project done because we've been doing both decks as well. One thing before we actually moved here that sort of new, but not necessarily to the extent is how cold it can be up here. So I'd imagine that if we actually have a hot summer that it's gonna be very, very hot as well. But it's really cold up here. We were talking to one of our neighbors the other day and they were saying it was like, you know, we're in the middle of winter and they were saying, oh, it was seven degrees this morning. It was so cold. And we were like, it was two degrees up where we are. <laughs> Absolutely insane. So it's quite a big difference. It has taken a little bit for us to get used to. And that was another one of the reasons why we really wanted to put the bistro blinds up. Um, just because we are so open here, like we don't have any protection that's the gas heater popping. We don't have any actual protection from the elements up here. Uh, it is quite open and we're kind of on a mountain. So we get a lot of cold wind and a lot of driving rain. So the bistro blinds were a no brainer really. My husband and I sit out here. Uh, we have a morning coffee together before we actually start the day. So we're out here at about six o'clock and it's, it's sometimes it's quite bitterly cold, but my goodness, the sunrises that you see of a morning coming up through the trees are just absolutely beautiful. And of an afternoon, I'll see if I can find some footage because of an afternoon, the sunsets out here are stunning. The skies are so big here. I didn't realize, like obviously the sky is as big as the sky is, but I didn't realize that living where the houses are so close together, you know, out here, you can actually see all the weather happening. Like right now, I'm actually watching the mist roll in because it's quite cold and foggy. I'll see if I can show you. So you can see that sort of like impression of a hill just back there. That's actually just looking down into a valley and that's the mist rolling in. So it really is quite stunning here. Uh, it's just cold. <laughs> and I imagine if we actually ever do get a really hot summer like a normal Australian summer it's gonna be so hot thank gosh for air conditioning so for the last month we've been installing our bistro blinds um, we obviously had some touch-up of painting to do we still do have a little bit more painting to do it's just it's so very high I'm, I'm not great with heights and it's really really high we actually had um, painters quote to paint the top area for us and they quoted like three and a half thousand dollars because they were going to have to have scaffolding and that sort of thing. So it is very, very high. Um, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get it all painted eventually. So we actually had some building supplies left over from when the builders actually built the deck. Um, this handrail, for example, we had one of these left over and we ended up using it as one of the cross beams to hang the bistro blinds from. It took a little bit of working out. Um, we definitely learnt that with the first one, we actually painted it while it was hanging up. That was not the smartest decision. So with the second one, we actually painted it while it was down on the ground. That was so much easier. <laughs> so learn from our lessons. If you, if you do the same thing, definitely paint while it's down on the ground, not up in the sky. So we installed our bistro blinds. Um, we ended up hanging them directly underneath so that the drop level would be right for the flooring. And then once we actually had them drop down, you just affix them to the floor of the deck. Um, just so that they don't flap around in the wind. We found that they still were flapping around in the wind. Unfortunately, you have to wait about 10 to 14 days for the plastic to completely relax and drop. After that did happen, we were able to then screw the sides on. So that made it so much better and they don't flap in the wind like they were before. So we didn't quite have enough timber to do all around three sides of the deck so we actually did end up having to purchase some more timber which was perfectly fine we we just thought we'd use what we actually had laying around as well so we purchased the other one and we hung that up and it feels so much more like a room now I know that come summertime we won't want to have the blinds down we will probably leave these ones just here uh, that's the western side that cops a lot of the really bad weather so storms for example tend to come from that side so we will leave those ones down permanently but the other ones we will actually lift up and obviously allow for airflow we're still not sure if we will need to have a ceiling fan putting here um just because last summer really wasn't a proper summer so we're not sure how to gauge the heat it's something that we'll look at addressing if we need to we also need to address the roof in here so the roof, for example, now it looks pretty yucky. We're looking at actually lining it with some um, black color bond and that will make it look a lot nicer, I believe. And then if we have to installing a fan, we do have a heat strip. 
but we'll look at installing a fan if we need to. So all in all, we're really happy with the way that the bistro blinds have turned out out here. Uh, we still, we have just a little gap. You can see that side has a gap there. That just allows us at the night time to be able to see directly down to the chickens, just being on Fox Alert. Um, on the other side behind me, you can see there's actually not a gap there. That's actually just a, um, a zipper. So it's a joiner. So we elected to have a joiner there. So we don't actually need to look down the back of the block of the night time, but we do need to just be able to have a little gap there to be able to see the chickens, just, just to keep an eye on them. So that's essentially how we managed to double the size of our tiny homes. I will take you for a tiny home tour shortly. Um, I want to show you it before we do anything to it because we do plan on obviously keeping it now and making some rather large changes to it. So I want to show you in all its ugliness and then show you in all its glory because <laughs> I do plan on making it nice. It just takes a bit of work. So thank you so much for joining me today. I love showing little updates of our property. That's the whole point of me having YouTube is to show updates on our property and have it basically as like a documentary series for for our property for when we actually get to where we want the property to be to be able to look back and go oh I remember when we added bistro blinds onto our little decks and we were living in tiny homes it was crazy <laughs> so thank you so much for joining along and please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already thank you